At first glance, the large number of tools and options within our Tech Studio can seem a bit overwhelming, but there is a basic workflow that you follow no matter what object you're scanning or capturing within our Tech Studio. If you would like to follow along, you can check the video description for links to the manual processing guide, which has detailed information about each step that I'm about to go over, as well as a practice project you can download and open up in our Tech Studio so you can follow along. Let's get started. So let's switch over to the software here. I've got my little sumo character. This is a great uh, example of an organic, a small organic object that you might be scanning. This is the Artec Space Spider, although everything I'm about to show you also applies to all the other Artec scanners once you've actually captured the data inside of Artec Studio. All right, so let's capture some data here. Get started with my preview. Now I have disabled the automatic base removal because I want to show you step by step the process that you might use no matter what the object is. But if I were to enable automatic base removal, um, it would automatically remove this turntable after I'm done scanning. Now I do want my complete object. So after each scan, I'll flip them over so I can get a different angle on each of these to capture all the obscured portions. And depending on the object you're, ha you're, you're scanning, uh, you may have to do more or less scans than I'm actually doing right here. So I'm just going to do three quick scans and we are done with that. All right. So now we have our raw scan data, and I will now show you step by step how to take this to a finished model. Now, what I won't do is go into really in-depth detail about each step. I just want to show you the process, and then you can refer to that manual processing guide for a lot more detailed um, information and specific numbers and best practices to go along with each step. All right, so after capturing the data, the next thing you will do is um, go to the editor and potentially the eraser if you need to remove portions of the scan um, that you don't actually want in your final uh, mesh. So I'm going to come over to the editor. You'll notice when it leaves the scan screen for that first time, it will run a fine registration automatically. And again, if you had automatic base removal enabled, then you might not have to do this, but you also might have other things around the scan that you don't actually want in your final uh, mesh. So you could come in here to the eraser and there's a couple different types of tools here. I won't go over every single one of them, but I'm gonna show you two of them here. So there is the cutoff plane selection, which is kind of a manual uh, plane cutoff tool where I can select the base here move it up and down and choose to erase everything under that. There's also an actual base selection, which is a little more of a manual version of the automatic base removal process that happens during scanning. But it, you paint a little bit and then it chooses what it thinks it should remove for the base. All right. So you can do more editing if you want. You can erase complete portions. You can use the 2D selection to actually come in and erase parts of the scans, maybe if you don't want certain things in there. But I want everything in here except for that base. So I can move on to my next step now. I'm gonna click the close button. And then we are going to go to the align tab. Now, if you only have one scan, you can skip this. But I'm gonna to go to the Align tab because I wanna use all of these and they are nowhere near being lined up correctly. Now, depending on the object you have, you can use the Auto Alignment button or manually place points. For this video, I'm just going to click the Auto Alignment button and then we'll move on. But there are separate videos that we have that go more into depth on manual alignment. All right, so I've done that and everything looks really good. I can click apply, and that's the alignment. Now, the next step we're going to do is go to the Tools tab, and the next step in line after alignment is global registration. So I'm gonna take a second here and make a little note here. 
because I haven't mentioned it yet, these little eyes over here in the workspace show when a scan is active. So if you deselect everything, then nothing is active and your algorithms won't run on anything. Um, if I want to run an algorithm or a tool or something on just one scan, I just make sure that one scan is selected. Um, now, I want to run global registration on all the scans together, so I'm going to make sure that all of them are selected. And I do like to expand all of my algorithms just to double check my settings before running them. But this looks good. This is the default. Notice if I change this, this little box fills in. So if you ever change any settings in these drop downs and you don't remember what the defaults were, you can click that little button and go back to the default. All right, so geometry and texture works great for the majority of objects. That's the default, so I just leave it at that unless you have trouble. So we'll click Apply, and it will run that global registration. What that is doing is it's comparing all of the frames captured in all of the scans to each other and making sure that everything is exactly where it needed to be. Okay, so the next step after global registration is um, the outlier removal. Now, this is mostly used for Artex Space Spider scans due to the fact that you're usually capturing very high detail items and the noise floating around the object can sometimes mess with the fine details. So you want to make sure that's nice and clean. If I change my points view here, notice all these points around here just kind of floating out there. Outlier removal cleans that up. So I've changed my settings here. The, the one thing you want to make sure of is that whatever resolution you run this at needs to be what you plan to run your fusion at later on. So I know that I'm going to do my fusion for this at 0.3 millimeters. And one more note on here is whenever you have a resolution option in these settings, now that I've run global registration, I can look over here at my max error column. And you don't look at this until after global registration, which we just ran. If you notice, I have a, a value of 0.1 in each of these. Acceptable ranges are noted in that manual processing guide, but uh, for the space spider, as long as I'm under 0.3, I'm probably okay. Um, should be fine. Now, I don't have to run this, this specific item at 0.1 millimeters. It's probably overkill for that. So I'm going to choose 0.3, but the big thing is that this resolution number, you do not want it to be lower than this over here. So if I had a value of 0.3, then I wouldn't want to, uh, over here in the max error column, I wouldn't want to come over here and put in a 0.1 millimeter value. So that's just a little note on resolution that's also in that, that processing guide there. So these are the settings I'm going to use for this. Click Apply, and we will run that, and you'll notice it'll get a lot cleaner here as it removes points that are deviating from the normal. There we go. So it's a lot cleaner. All right. I'm going to switch back to my solid view here. After running outlier removal, I am going to run a fusion. There are several types of fusions. I won't get into the specific types and, and settings on all of these, but I'm going to expand sharp fusion. And I'm going to put in a resolution of 0.3 here. And I am going to choose watertight for the hole filling. If you, um, if you only had, say, one scan, and you didn't want it to just blob out wherever uh, you didn't scan, then, then you wouldn't want to choose watertight. You'd want to choose fill hole by radius, and then it'll only fill the really small holes. But since I have scanned the whole object all the way around, I can choose watertight and it'll come out fine. So here's my resolution, again 0.3, watertight, click apply. And this is going to fuse all three of those scans and all the frames within them into one single mesh, or what could be exported as a mesh. And that'll take just a second. All right, so here it is. After creating your fusion, you're going to run your small objects filter. Most of the time I choose the leave the biggest object, so I'll just do that now. The other option is to filter by threshold. 
That's great if you had a partial scan of something and there were multiple disconnected pieces and you only wanted to uh, get rid of the little tiny floating pieces around it and leave the larger disconnected pieces. But for a watertight object, leave the largest object usually works best. Okay, so here is my mesh or my, my model. This is my fusion. This looks pretty good here. If I double click over here on the right hand side in my workspace, if I double click on the fusion, I can see that it's 500, about 570,000 polygons. That might be fine for whatever program you're bringing this into. It might not be. Um, so there are a couple options for reducing your mesh. Again, I won't explain these in extreme detail, but for this object, I'm going to use fast mesh simplification. And I'm going to choose a value of 200,000 polygons. That should work well for this and click apply. If you wanted to reduce an object more accurately, you go to regular mesh simplification and then there's an accuracy stop condition here and you can put your acceptable error deviation right there and that's in millimeters. But for this, fast mesh simplification is fine. If I come over here to my fusion again, um, it looks like it's 200,000 polygons exactly like I wanted. All right, so after reducing the mesh, the next step is to, you could check your edges. If this was a partial scan, you could come over to your Fix Holes tab and smooth edges and fill in holes and all that. But I had a complete scan. I chose to make it watertight, so there aren't any holes in this at all. All right, so the next step I'm going to do is Texture Application. I'll come in here to my Texture tab. I will choose all of the raw scans that I want to pull the color data from. Again, if there were certain scans you don't want to use, you can just choose a couple of them if you wanted to, but I'm going to choose all of my scans. And I have my fusion up here selected as well. And it's going to take the scan color, uh, the, the color from the raw scans and apply it over top of my fusion. And these are the default settings here. I believe, I don't think I've changed anything here. They work really well, unless you have uh, reason to change any of these, you shouldn't really have to. You can change your resolution of the, the resulting uh, JPEG or PNG uh, that you export, but for the most part, these are the settings that I use the majority of the time. Click Apply, and it will now go through and apply that color data to the object. All right, so here it is. It brings you, at, right after applying that texture, it brings you to a little screen, um, a little tab here that allows you to go through and adjust the values here. Now, it comes out with some values that should be pretty close, but you have the option of adjusting those if needed. I'm going to click Apply, because that looks fine to me. And then you are pretty much done. Um, you can now go to File, export meshes and then choose wherever you want to put this and export in any number of formats right here. So STL is pretty common, OBJ, WRL, those are some of the more common ones. Um, but it really just depends on what you're trying to do with it after you're done processing. And that is how you do the manual processing in Artec Studio.